Wagwan Seattle, Wagwan, Wagwan, Washington State, Wagwan, anybody in the Pacific Northwest, Wagwan if you're in Africa, Wagwan if you're in Qatar, Wagwan if you're in Dallas, Wagwan if you're listening to us from Portland, Mexico, Ghana, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, anybody out there who's feeling the tip tip, this is the tip show, the African excellence, the tip, the tip of the fly. The tip of the drip, the tip of the sauce, the tip of the information. You know what it is? It's your boy, East Africa's first, freshest import, Dubai, Dennis Moronga. How y'all handling this weather, y'all? This is fall weather. And yo, this is World Cup weather. This is Kanye West versus Adidas weather. This is Agas Arsena just came out weather. This is, ah, uh, yo, yo, vibes on vibes, y'all. Anyway, for, for those who are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we are a small developing African podcast and I'm really excited about our growth the last two, three years, man. Um, shout out to the first podcasters from Africa who brought it all the way to the PNU. We don't play, you. This has been an amazing season and right now uh, we are about to celebrate uh, one of America's most loved, loved and cherished holidays which is the Thanksgiving, which is the mass massacre of the birds called turkey. The tasteless stuff, no matter how much seasoning you put on it. But for those who love turkey, shout out to you. For those who love chicken, you know the power to the people. But hey, I'm really excited. I just want to say thank you to all our fans. Thank you to all our supporters all over the globe who have been uh, rolling with us. You know, hard times, good times, when we were on air, when we were off air. I just want to say uh, thank you. And uh, you deserve the best Thanksgiving. Whether your family members are annoying as hell or not, you deserve the best Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving etiquette, one or two things. Number one, don't ask anybody when they're getting married. That's some dumb shit, okay? That's some dumb shit. Unless you're paying dowry or unless you're going to stay with the spouse, don't ask them that rubbish. Number two, there's your drunk uncles and aunties. Please. Make sure you keep them in one corner, you know what I'm saying? Like the end corner of the house, like the end tables, like the restaurant, so they don't bother anybody when they're putting their refills. You know, you don't want to always try to explain to the kids why the drunk uncle and the drunk auntie always has a red cup, like right next to them. Number three, please, we all know people who can't cook in our families for shit. They can't cook for nothing. Even if they give you water, you don't trust it. Because God, you don't know, bless them with any element any talent in the kitchen please we know you want to put your cranberry sauce your potato salad that gave everybody diarrhea the last year please don't force people to eat your food number three please when you're having when you're taking food away uh this is something i saw on a tiktok video about uh, this lady she had like to go or uh, those to go plates the to go plastic plates uh you can get the ones which the pre-baked ones, like the baking, baking sauce, baking pans, whatever, how we make, where we make cupcakes or little, you know, muffins and stuff. Have one of those, buy one of those from Costco, Walmart, or whichever big grocery store is next to you and have people use those to have to go plates. Because I know some of you are so disrespectful. I went to a, a function like a week ago and people were taking like heaps of food, like layers of leftovers i i feel like there should be a leftover etiquette you can cook we invited you over you ate one two three four five i don't know how many additions you went to but if you take to go plates home remember there's etiquette for it like you just take bits of everything so everybody can have some just just don't go and empty the whole bowl of wings and, and take half the turkey home with you bro that's a just the next level of selfishness, right? Just don't do it. Now that we are out of uh, the Thanksgiving etiquette out of the way, which team do you support at, at, at this World Cup, bro? I'm confused. I'm, I'm confused. Today, in history, Argentina, which holds one of the most decorated footballers of all time, Lionel Messi, lost to the nobodies you know a lot of people will not agree with with my sentiments all the way but i don't give a fuck i don't believe saudi arabia whooped argentina 
if you watch Netflix, there is a show right now, and that show is called, um, it's like a docu-series. It's called Bad Sports. And this Bad Sports, it really fucked up my childhood dreams. What I used to believe was sportsmanship or pure sportsmanship, right? So they have a couple of episodes where they focus on this guy who used to win in the 500s. You know, if you love Safari Rally in Kenya, this is the higher version of it here in the States. Uh, they go from Formula One to like really hot, hot. I'm telling you, these cars have like 600, 600 horsepower and shit. They are flying, flying 285 miles an hour. And I'm just watching from Kentucky Derby to high school, uh, high school, college basketball, to rugby, to soccer, and you and you 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 are exposed to just a different and fathomable levels of corruption in sports, and you get to understand that a game just like Saudi Arabia and Argentina could be easily fixed. I know it's not basketball, so it's not like only point shedding or anything, but still money goes around and money dictates from ice skating rings or figure skaters uh, to basketball players to this soccer in Qatar I don't believe Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia was that good I've never heard Saudi Arabia teams in any English Premier League see my team name no be hey 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 I can't even get the lyrics right for a second but he says Premier League is not UFA Joha don't lie to us and I know a lot of you share my same sentiments. Until the books are cleared, five years from now when there's no documentary coming out, I need, I need proof that this particular Saudi Arabian soccer players really whooped Argentina's ass. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we also have our politics. You know, I'm huge on politics, so I like following him up. It's all men's sports, so I love it. Um, I'm really happy that Democrats won a lot of seats this time. Although a lot of people have, you know, their, their feelings towards Democrats and Republicans. I am in the middle. I, I don't want to say both of them are awful or one of them is amazing because they both pinched me in the ass so hard. But I want to tell you that uh, we are in a better position now that we have the House and they have the Senate. Oh, they have the Senate. We have the House. Whichever one you understand faster. And this whole announcement about Donald Trump running for president. What do you guys think about it? Donald Trump 2024 and you know I, I was actually hoping that uh, I was looking forward to Kanye and and Trump here so Trump Kanye or Kanye Trump or Kanteng or Kanton whatever, whatever that they were gonna like collabo in 2024 to win but I think this morning I heard an announcement that Kanye is running by himself and Donald Trump is running by himself and uh, Donald Trump track record has not been good. Dr. Oz or whatever fucking up that doctor was, he lost after so aggressively campaigning with the orange man himself. But yo, with politics, you just never know. You just never know. I want to send love to all the Kenyan uh, soldiers. Uh, my dad being a veteran of uh, the Kenya army, uh, people were deployed to different countries. Um, I want to send love to them. They are going to Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, to help the people there. The refugees is a mass a group of refugees. Uh, there's a lot of fighting right at the border. There's, there's the Rwanda border, the Uganda border, the Congolese border. A lot of the Congolese people are blaming this militia group called M13 or M23 or something. They are getting their weapons from Rwanda, okay, which is not a cool thing. Because then you're watering down the East African Union. You're watering down the credibility of the East African community. We can never be a superpower when we have so much division within the, you know, within the fabric, fam. If you're Congolese out there, man, we're sending love to your families. I know some of you have not seen your families in a long time. So sending love and light to you guys. Of course, our brothers up north uh, in Tigrinya, you guys also... Um, you're fighting. You've been fighting for two years and I empathize and, and I feel everything y'all have been doing, man. Uh, for those who don't know, there's been a massacre, um, Eritrean, Ethiopian border. There's the Tigray community, which is part of Ethiopia, but Ethiopia is trying to like annex these people, like kapush. And they've really been killing people like 
families can't, they don't know where their mothers are. Uh, the refugees here who I work with through my nonprofit, the Kicheko, shout out to Kicheko Factory. Uh, please, if you find a way to pass the word out, please do. Uh, there are a lot of mixed feelings about uh, a recent incident here in Seattle. I wouldn't call it an incident, really. It's like a protest. It's like a, it's like one of those uprisings, but a softer one on a subtle scale. Now, I am torn a little bit at how they did it because it was a work day. It was on a Thursday, just like a fortnight ago, two weeks ago. Um, the main freeway in Seattle that connects north, south, east, and west is called I-5. All right? So I-5 is where the love is. I-5 is the pipeline where it feeds the city in and out, and it connects us all the way from Portland all the way to Vancouver, Canada. And unfortunately, um, I think the nature uh, of the urgency of the situation in Tigaranya forced these activists to block an entire freeway on one of the busiest days of the week. Now, sometimes we misunderstand that it's not the message, it's the delivery. It's not how what you say, it's how you say it. So I remember I had two friends who were visiting. From, one, one was from Sweden and the other one was from Poland. And they had to catch a flight on that day. Okay? And I, for those who don't understand, international flights are not like this stepped on flights like Spirit Airlines or Frontier and all these other rubbish airlines, the buses of the, of the air. These airlines, once you miss your flight, it's a really huge, it's a massive budget to kind of like for them to reschedule you. You have to pay your own hotel room, room and board. It's expensive. Basically, the inconvenience is not, it's not something I can put in words. It's painful. When this activist went ahead, it was a, a convoy of like 30 to 40 cars. I think they were going in one direction. I think they came from north and they were heading south. So they blocked all um, the exit next, like I live here by 166, right? So from exit 166 all the way to exit, close to exit 163, they had blocked that area. So it means if you had a delivery, if you had to go to hospital, if you were going for an interview, your whole day is fucked. I understand when you want to make the public understand your predicament but truth be told a lot of people that were affected a lot of a lot of businesses that lost their money delivery uber drivers you know what i'm saying uh doordash drivers doctors people going to their work appointments missing flights you're inconveniencing people that had nothing nothing to do with your struggle and i feel if you inconvenience me and you equally want my empathy, you're asking for too much. You're punching me in the clavicle and you're telling me, breathe! <laughs> you can't. I think it's unfair. We need to find ways that, that do not inconvenience other people. Unless they're directly involved with our conflict, we need to find a way that's, that's reasonable. How we express what we want to express how we bring awareness to people. Yes, you want the whole world to know. Cops came out. A lot of activists were arrested. I understand that. And power to the people, man. More love to y'all. I also empathize with people who had nothing to do with your war. Some of them have never heard of your country and have never been to Africa. That is not fair to them. That's my two cents. From the Tip Tip Show, we love and support Tigrania. We just have to find a better way to like, you know, come to the table and bring our grievances. Now, Seattle, West Side Seattle, the bridge is open, but I, I don't think it's as active, West Seattle is as active as it used to be, uh, but West Seattle is still popping. It gets dark now in Washington at 4.15 p.m. I went to look for a car, now I'm in the market for a new car, and bro, it got dark so fast at 4, I knew Jesus was coming today. This is the day I have to pay for all the scenes. I have to go and pay for all those times I took extra toppings from Chipotle. 
Yo, it's a lot going on in the world today, but I want to share good news because there's no, there's endless bad news. I could talk about all the school shootings in America today, but I don't want to shit on my parade. I don't want to shit on my podcast. I want to shit on this episode. I think at this point in America, we have become so desensitized by the shootings around here. All these school shootings, bro. The three kids who just came from a game that were shot in their bus. The the beautiful the beautiful group of white people who were were shot. They weren't even shot. I heard they were stabbed. Them girls, they were stabbed. You know you you know how how much heart you need to just go stab one person, take the just a lot of like like heartlessness. Like you stab, you take the knife out. The blood is gushing. Then you stab again. Then you go to the next place. Then you go to the next place, bro. The shootings at the gay club in Colorado. Sending love and light to everybody who's affected. But man, just stay safe. During this holiday period, I, I, I didn't think I'd ever say this being an extrovert. But if you could avoid being outside, if you could avoid being in some places, just, just be in your home, just be in your space, be in your room, hang out with people who love you and care about you. Don't, don't fuck around with everybody else. Just, just hang around with yourself. Um, I want to send um, um, a disappointing message to the people who are expecting Andrew Kibe to come into the city. Unfortunately, uh, the group of organizers uh, that had pitched into me, to, like pitched to me to to be the host of this and make sure we have a panel and all that. Unfortunately, the arrangements didn't go well, and we'll have to find another way to invite Andrew Kibe here under better logistical circumstances and a better team. I believe at this point of my career. I cannot consign to anything mediocre. So anybody mediocre, any brand mediocre, I don't think, I think you guys deserve better. I think you guys have struck with me for two years. You deserve better. Now, we are going to have a concert. Um, it's going to be called the Kicheko Charity Show. I am trying to find the best artists in Seattle. Musicians. I have a studio that I that I stumbled on and close to SeaTac, which is a really dope ambiance. It's soundproof, so anything we perform will be almost like Trevor Noah level, Daily Show level. So if you know an artist, and I'm saying this in the most humble way possible, I respect artists who have a who have a little pride, but I don't work well with ego, especially from underachievers. Okay. I, I, I don't work well with ego from underachievers. When I used to be an artist, I'm still an artist, by the way. When I used to be like a music producer and I'd make a track, take like a week, two weeks to make a beautiful beat. And then it'll take another two weeks to, to like record and have a, you know, master three weeks. I used to write personal emails. I used to reach out to people. I used to perform free complimentary shows because I knew I was nobody. I was still building myself to be that artist that I need to be. If no one has ever flown you out, if you have never got a paid show that has paid you more than a rack, if you have never performed for more than 300 people, if you have never performed outside your state area, you're still developing. Even the people that perform that are still developing. It's an American artist thing. You have to put your ego aside. Stop listening to those five friends you got. Your yes men. You've done your songs and you got views from your uh, drunk uncle and drunk auntie. You're not the artist yet. I haven't seen you. I've hosted from Grammy Award winning artists, Oscar Award winning artists, movie stars. And they are humble as fuck. If you're an artist in Seattle, I don't need to beg you to be on a podcast or come to a show. You know the urgency and the beauty of being on different platforms unless you have a watermelon brain and you're not really sure what to do with your art. You're just a poster. Imposter. Imposter syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. But if you really want I got producers from Brainy Beats was produced Grammy nominated artists. And we want to work with you. 
And we want you to bring your art to fruition. We want you to bring it to the people. Don't let social media inflate your ego. Ego does not open any doors. Any doors. If you really want to work and expand your craft, you got to have mentors. You got to watch people who have been in the game for a while. I heard this before from a pastor. If you all watch the Transformation Church, that's my pastor. I love that guy. Todd, Todd, shout out to Todd. More life, my more respect to you from Africa. Pastor Todd of the Transformation Church made this quote the other two weeks ago on his, uh, one of his, uh, his uh, Sunday preachings. Uh, don't ask me why I go to church online. I just I, I try to go in person to some of the churches in Seattle here, but they gave me nasty looks like I'm coming to shoplift the title or something. So yeah, I, I, my Jesus will come to me in a peaceful place. And Pastor Todd said, when you look at the greats, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Floyd Money Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, Serena and the sister Williams. They have a coach. They have a coach. A coach does not is not there because you're doing something wrong. You're already doing something right. And you can be perfect in any way within your craft, within your blessing. But for you to be better the next level, you need to be able to be around people who can correct you. If you feel rattled by correction, you'll never reach the potential that God wants you to get. As an artist, as a creative, I'm constantly learning from people way younger than me, way older than me. I don't have a limit. The thing about it is I know there's different gifts that have been accorded to different people. If you are trying to grow, you have to allow, you have to have that room for correction. If you don't want to listen to anybody, oh, you know, I'm a star, I got this and it, you're going to be the underground people. I have been in Seattle for four years. I have known artists from the day I landed in this state that have never moved. They either perform their little one-star venues every Friday or Saturday. They never grow. Growth requires correction. You have to have somebody who molds you and teaches you and pushes you and make sure that you're well refined to meet the world. That being said, man, I appreciate all of you. This show is going to be great. Again, if you're an artist out there, you want to be of the you want to be part of the Kicheko thing, put your ego aside. Pride, yes, ego aside. If you want to grow from people who have been in places that you have never been, send an email to the Kicheko project at gmail.com. Send your work. Okay? I will never lie to you. My credits are stacked up. Like a falcon eagle's wings. Put your ego aside. Put your pride. And let's just get this art out there. There's money to be made. So let's go, bro. Let's. Let's go. Let's. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the tip show. It's your boy, General Mutombo. I'm about to bounce. Just one more thing. One more thing. And this has really bothered me here in Seattle, right? This has really bothered me as an ambassador of Afrobeat, as one of the, the guys who have been pushing Afrobeat here before, before, before. Uh, shout out to all the DJs, all the, all the players, all the, um, the people out there moving the needle, pushing the needle to make sure our sound is heard by everybody. Number one, you can be an Afrobeat ambassador, making money out of Afrobeat in Seattle, yet you don't like Africans. I know... Some of you have never been to Africa. You're making money of a continent that you can't even take a vacation there. That already, already know. We know you. You people don't even look African. We know you making money out of our thing. You and the white people that you think are stealing your culture, you're the same. 
You have never stepped one foot in the continent, but you feel like you're the ambassador. You don't like the people. You never go to any African events. You never go to any Afrobeat Caribbean. Anything that we do here, you just want to approach from the industry. Like I'm, I'm the, I'm the cream de la cream. Who told you? Who appointed you? Who put you on that pedestal to represent us? Did you go to your little whatever, whatever, whatever? You two percent Nigerians and three percent Kenyans. We are. We see you. Number two. There are a lot of Afrobeat artists from Portland, Oregon to Vancouver, Canada. All the suburbs of Seattle from Snohamish, Puyallup, Tacoma, all these places. You cannot always overlook the people in your neighborhood, then act like you're an ambassador of of people who have already made it. Then you come off as a culture vulture. I spoke to a guy, a, a, a musician, a musician from Portland. His name is Easy Baba Mello. Easy Baba Mello is an, is a, is an upcoming Afro pop, Afro superstar from Portland, Oregon. He has a lot of records, you know, they're, they're yet, they're bubbling under, so they're coming up. But he has dope videos. I was in one of the videos, I made a cameo the other day. He had a release party. We were out there by the Lumen Stadium last weekend. And he, he voiced his complaint to me that there are a lot of Afrobeat artists. Af no, not artists. Correction. I take that back. Circle. There are a lot of Afrobeat DJs in Washington, in, here in Seattle. They play from Red Lounge to Rafiki's, and they don't play local artists. They don't play the Jamaican artists who are based here. They don't play the Afrobeat tour on. You know the world is watching you, right? You can't cheat the universe. You can be popular at this point, whatever. But if Wheezy today wakes up and sells the MSG, just like Wizkid, just like Burner Boy, I don't want you ass kisses. To start recognizing, start tapping into, oh, you know, we used to know him now. This is our time to unite and push our sound and our art forward. Ten years ago, when I came into the game, Latin music, reggaeton was the shit. It was everything reggaeton, everything Everything, even when I was making music with, uh, well, Barrington Levy and uh, Junior Reed were in the studio. It was, everybody was like, La reggaeton, reggaeton, reggaeton. But it's a season. There's different, this Bad Bunny now was a different sound. But it's a season. We don't want Afrobeat to be a season. Let's help each other, right? Let's build with one another. That's the love that we came in from the motherland. Otherwise, my last thing for the day. I don't know. But I'm sure hell gonna find out. What will make Seattle the top destination for Afrobeat in the USA? With that, thank you for listening to me. Let me head out. More life, more blessings. Till next time.